Welcome back to Digital Charcuterie, my fellow United fans. It's me, Andrew Fantasia, your favorite bald person. Welcome. Uh, so happy to have you all back here for the final season of DC United, the hypothetical board game that doesn't exist, but there's a good chance it might. And this is exactly how I would like to see it play out and hopefully how a lot of you would like to see it play out. Before we get started, the usual stuff, like and subscribe and all that jazz, and if you think I'm okay, maybe consider checking out my fantasy novel, We Were Wizards, which I wrote. There's my name. There's my picture. Blah. And this is on Amazon right now in hardcover and paperback and ebook, as well as the next book in the series, which is called Ghosts of Wizards Past. Uh, we Were Wizards is a series that I have been writing for a long time. It is my pride and joy. It is my life's work. If you are a fantasy fan or you know someone who is a fantasy fan, do them and yourselves and me a huge favor. Support an up-and-coming, struggling, independent author and get We Were Wizards on Amazon right now. But with that out of the way, let's talk about DC United, the final season. Now, I'm a guy who is hoping and praying that we still are going to get a season four, a real season four of Marvel United. In fact, I did a whole hypothetical season four as well. But when it comes to DC United, after I pooled all my ideas together, everything worked out best wrapped up in these three seasons. I didn't see enough to expand into a fourth. And that's probably not because I did such a good job, but I think it's just because I have limited knowledge of it. I mean, there's so many characters in Marvel United who I've never heard of, so I want a fourth season because there's so many more that I have heard of that have still not been part of the game yet. So I'm hoping and praying that uh, that is the case. And if we do get a DC United, I'm hoping and praying there's a whole bunch of cool stuff that I have totally forgotten that gets added to it. But as it stands, this third season of DC United is the final one I have cobbled together. We're not going to waste any more time. We're going off of the patterns we have seen from Simon and Spin Master in Kickstarter campaigns. Your We're not going to fix what ain't broken. DC invented it. So please welcome DC United Multiverse. Is this a cop-out? I don't know. Maybe. Whatever. I don't care. DC Comics was doing the multiverse before Marvel ever was. So in my opinion, this is just multiverse coming home. DC has embraced the multiverse in so many cool ways ever since all the way back uh, in early, early Flash issues from the 80s. So it's their bread and butter. We got to respect it. We got to keep it going. Plus, it means I don't have to make a new logo because I've already got one there ready and waiting for me. So let's cut right to the chase. And by chase, I mean core box. I really made an attempt to embrace the idea of multiverse even more than the Marvel United campaign did. Sometimes it's to my own detriment because I prefer new characters over alternate versions and reskins and variants and whatnot, but I wanted to play with that and I think I did it well enough to satisfy me because here is the core box, a box with 10 characters. We know the drill by now. Six of those characters are heroes. Surprise, surprise. And those heroes are Batman, the Jace Fox version. Blue Beetle, the Jaime Reyes version. Dr. Light, the Kimio Hoshi version. The Flash, the Avery Ho version. Jessica Cruz, the Green Lantern. And Lady Quark. After that, the box will contain three multiversal villains, and they are Perpetua and Reverse Flash. All of these villains have been known to terrorize the multiverse in DC Comics, so thematically, mm, they all fit nicely. And last but not least, the tenth slot is being filled by an anti-hero that I know are going to make a lot of people happy. It's Bizarro, the alternate version of Superman. Even though he's not really a variant, he's just an alien that looks like Superman. You know what I mean, the Bizarro-verse is hilarious. He's a parallel version of a hero, so he's going in there. And he's going to be purple, just like his costume, which means you can play as him, which makes me triple excited. It all works out. Jessica Cruz will have translucent green effects on her mini. Reverse Flash will have translucent yellow effects on his mini. And Lady Quark will be translucent red, just like Human Torch, because she's uh, all fiery and stuff. 
So <laughs> makes sense. That's a multiversal core box that I can get behind. Even though I, you know, I don't know too many of these characters too well. I'm not familiar with Jace Fox or Avery Ho. I've never even heard of Lady Quark until I was doing research for this video, but they all fit the multiversal bill so well, I had to put them in here. So here they are. And just like always, we are throwing in a bonus villain team for those who pledge to get the core box. We started with the Royal Flush Gang, then we moved to the Society of Sin. This time, I went with a villain team that just needed to happen. It is the Court of Owls. The Court of Owls is going to consist of, I would imagine, four minis of the Talons, and they're moving around the board, and they're doing all kinds of terrible things, and you've got to stop them. It's the Court of Owls. What can we say? They're like the Illuminati of Gotham City. Unlike every other Batman villain in the game, they are not going to be playable in Arkham Asylum, because they don't really fit that thematically, and also, I would imagine, the way they play wouldn't work well with that. Like, they're already a team. They don't need to be teamed up with other people. Now it's time to talk about final boss battles. Every season has one. In the third season of Marvel United, we got the biggest, literally, baddest dude around, Galactus. So let's stay on that same trajectory because it works. I present to you the final boss battle of Season 3 Multiverse, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Arguably the most famous DC story of all time, Crisis on Infinite Earths is going to be adapted here, loosely adapted here, for all your board gaming pleasure, with the final battle villain being the biggest, baddest dude in the DC universe, the Anti-Monitor. He is going to be an enormously oversized miniature, just like Galactus, and he's going to cause all kinds of trouble. This box also comes with four other villains, Parallax, Psycho Pirate, and Superboy Prime, as well as an anti-hero, Harbinger. And you already know where this is going. All of these characters can be faced as individual villains or in a giant, tremendously difficult gauntlet, Crisis on Infinite Earths mode, where you've got to take each of these people down before you can go after the Anti-Monitor himself. It even rhymes with the coming of Galactus Fox because just like Frankie Reynova, Harbinger is an anti-hero, so you can have fun playing as her when you're done beating her. Crisis on Infinite Earths is just so exciting to me as a DC fan to get to play that in the United way and having these characters on board. Like, come on. Anti-Monitor alone is worth the price of admission, but then you get Parallax and you get Superboy Prime? Like, yes. Yes, please. Now let's dive into our first regular expansion of the season, namely... Legends of Tomorrow. This is actually based more off what the CW Arrowverse gave us, but all of these characters are big mainstays in the comics, so it's not like we're straying too far away from the source material here. Legends of Tomorrow is going to come with four heroes. Citizen Steel, Rip Hunter, Vixen, and White Canary. And the villain of the box will be the time-traveling dastardly villain, Vandal Savage, who's a big deal. He's been a thorn in the Justice League side for a long time. He is a powerhouse DC villain that needs to be in this game. Our next expansion isn't multiversal, but it does contain several alternate characters, and these characters came first. It is the Justice Society. These guys are some of the oldest, most classic DC characters. And in Justice Society box, you are going to get seven of these heroes. Alan Scott, the first Green Lantern. Dr. Midnight. Flash, the Jay Garrick version. Liberty Bell. Sandman. Starman. And Wildcat. And the villain you get in the box is none other than Baron Blitzkrieg, one of the Justice Society's most hilariously over-the-top foes. But I had to put him in here because he's too much fun to exclude. All right, as usual, as we go on, these are getting more and more exciting. Now we've got a box full of nothing but bad people, but they are so multiversal, they need to be here. Say hello to the Crime Syndicate. If you're not familiar with these guys, they are literally a parallel universe version of the Justice League, except everybody is an asshole. So you have the following villains. Ultraman, Superwoman, Owlman, 
Johnny Quick and Atomica, Power Ring, and Sea King. And Power Ring and Sea King will have translucent effects on their minis, because it looks pretty nifty. And sure, you could fight all these people on their own, or you could take them on as a giant six-villain team, the Crime Syndicate itself. And yes, the team will be interchangeable because there are other members of the Crime Syndicate yet to come. All right, this next expansion comes from one of the very first comic stories I ever read, and to this day it remains near and dear to my heart because of that. It is Reign of the Supermen. This early 90s tragedy was what introduced me to the world of DC Comics, and I have it to thank for opening my heart to this genre. Reign of the Supermen is a box that will contain five characters. The first two are heroes, and they are Steel and Superboy. The second two are villains, Cyborg Superman and Doomsday, who you can imagine will both be very, very difficult. The last one is an anti-hero and another version of the Man of Steel himself, Eradicator. All of these characters are ones that I was introduced to in Reign of the Supermen, so the fact that this box would exist, like if Simon ever made this box in real life, this would be, the way I feel about the Hobgoblin in Marvel United, I feel this way about DC. Like I would be over the moon if they made this. So if you're watching Simon, Throw me a bone here. Next, we're going to go a little bit outside the box, okay? This is totally left field. I don't think it's what anyone expects. It might not even be what very many people want. I know a lot of people who will be angered by this, but technically, it's still DC, and I want to see it. The next expansion is Watchmen. And I'm only including this because of the multiversal theme. They are part of the DC multiverse so thematically, in this season, you could forgive the fact that Watchmen characters are teaming up with Wonder Woman. It's fine, right? Besides, we got Doomsday Clock. It, 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 worse things have happened. So in the Watchmen expansion box, you get the following heroes. Dr. Manhattan, who will have translucent blue effects on his mini. Night Owl, Rorschach, and Silk Spectre. The villain of the box will be the Comedian. And as an anti-hero bonus, you get Ozymandias. He was once a Watchman, and for, you know, all we know, he did a good job at it, so that's why I wanted to make him an anti-hero. There's no way I'm making Comedian an anti-hero, because that dude is just terrible. So this box seems like a lot of fun to me. And the idea of a Rorschach drawn in chibi form, yeah, I'm all in. Our next expansion is the conclusion to what we've started in Season 1, because there are still many more Batman villains out there, folks, so let's hear it for Arkham Asylum 3. We want more, we're getting more. Nothing wrong with more, especially where a United game is concerned. Arkham Asylum 3 contains five villains, just like its predecessors. Those villains are Firefly, The Mad Hatter, Man Bat... Professor Pig, and my second favorite Batman villain ever, the Ventriloquist. You know the drill by now. All five of these villains can be played individually, or they can be added in any other combination with any other Batman villain to Arkham Asylum mode. And yes, let's give Firefly a whole bunch of translucent fire effects, because he's a pyromaniac and he should seek help. Also, I totally picture Man Bat being one of those fights where you don't want to hurt him. You want to try to get him to turn back into a human. So maybe you have to attack him with a heroic action instead of a, an attack action. I don't know. That's just a thought. But Man Bat should be handled a little differently. And I love the ventriloquist so much, so I can't wait to see how he could be integrated into this game. So that's all the regular expansions for DC United Multiverse. Slightly less than we had last time. But that's okay, because we covered a lot of bases. Now we're going to get to the stretch goal box here, but before we do, we have one more surprise. See, Marvel United surprised us all with Spider-Geddon, a core box separate from the Kickstarter campaign, 
full of Spider-Man variants and Spider-Man foes because the Spider-Man world is so rich and diverse and because it fit the theme of the multiverse. Well, who am I to keep a good thing down? As an extra bonus treat, I have put together a second core box separate from this campaign that'll go to retail that you can order and that hopefully will arrive on time, unlike Spider-Geddon. It is Batman of the Multiverse. And this is another occasion where people are either going to love this or jump down my throat, but I don't care. This makes me happy. Spider-Man has more variants than any Marvel hero. Batman has more variants than any DC hero. And this box is chock full of them. As a core box, it contains 10 characters, six of which are heroes. And they are Batman 1966, Batman 1989, Batman 1997, Batman 2008, Batman Beyond, and Batman The Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know what everybody's feeling, but I think this is a lot of fun. Especially if you're the kind of person who likes to paint your minis, I'm sure you'll have a lot of good times with this box. Uh, but that's not even the half of it. Well, that's a little bit more than half of it, but we still got two villains in here to talk about. One of them being Barbatos, the villainous demonic bat creature thing who haunts the multiverse in recent Batman comics. I know very little about him, but he checks so many boxes here, I have to put him in here. And the second villain is another multiversal Batman variant, the Batman who laughs, who has made so many waves recently that I think he's officially been added to the pantheon of classic Batman villains, so much so that I'm going to go ahead and say he can be played against in Arkham Asylum mode. But we still have two characters left in this core box and they are anti-heroes. So they can be heroic Batman or villainous Batman depending on how you're feeling that day. And they are Azrael Batman who showed up in the 90s during the Nightfall saga with the crazy suit and Flashpoint Batman where it's Thomas Wayne, not Bruce, who wears the cape and cowl. I had to make this core box. This is so much fun to me. I've always dreamed of seeing these multiple Batman, you know, being able to swap in and out with each other. Uh, I'm still waiting for an Arkham Asylum type game where you can play as them and switch between them. But, you know, one day it'll happen. But in the meantime, I have this to tide me over. That is Batman of the Multiverse, a separate core box, and I need it in my life. Okay, now it's time for the stretch goal box, our final stretch goal box, which is a little bittersweet, but that's okay. Here we go. It's the stretch goals for DC United Multiverse, starting with another bat person, ironically, uh, but this time it's not a variant. It is a person from the Prime Universe, and it is Batwoman who I haven't seen too much of, but she's been coming in more and more. You know, she's becoming a bigger and bigger character as the decades go on. And I am more than happy to have members of uh, the Gotham Knights slash Bat family on board. So Batwoman is here. Next, we have a Flash villain, Big Sur, who is goofy and hilarious. And I love the way he looks. Uh, so I wanted to have him in here. And as a Flash villain, he can be added to the Rogues challenge mode which you'll remember from all the way back in season one. Black Hawk, a World War II centric character from DC. He's a pilot. He's actually the leader of a, a squadron of planes called the Black Hawks. If you've seen the Justice League episode where they all go back in time to World War II and they fight Vandal Savage, Black Hawk is there. I want to play as Black Hawk. Next, we have a hero that has long been missing from here, Blue Beetle, the Ted Cord version. We got the Jaime Reyes version in the core box. Now we got Ted Cord, the original Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle has a great suit, a great look. He's just fun. He's got to be here. And I know DC fans who've been watching these have probably been wondering when the hell I was going to get to Blue Beetle. Well, this is the hell when I'm going to get to Blue Beetle. Speaking of which, let's get his best friend in on the fun, Booster Gold is the next character we're unlocking in the stretch box. And I'm sure a lot of people are happy that he's finally here. Uh, I was saving him for part three. I wanted to save some heavy hitters for part three. We finally got him. And you can make him and Blue Beetle team up. You can maybe even make them team up against the following villain, a giant sized villain. So he'll be a, a big miniature, Chemo, who is a big chemical mess of a, he's almost like a big kaiju made out of toxic waste. So he's gonna be full of translucent green effects. He's gonna be an awesome looking miniature and he'll be big. Next, we have a Gotham City-based hero, the Creeper, 
who's crazy and hilarious, and he has green skin and a big red feather boa wrapped around him. What's not to love about the Creeper? Next is the hero, Crush, who I believe is the daughter of Lobo. She has uh, come into things a little more recently, at least, well, more recently than I've been reading. So I don't know much about Crush, but just based on how she looks, she seems really cool. I love the idea of Lobo having a daughter. So of course I want Crush to be in here. Welcome aboard. And next is another hero, Damage, who is a very classic hero with a classic look, and he's got the big radioactive symbol on his chest. Alex Ross draws this guy beautifully, and he is a member of the Justice Society, who are getting their own team deck, so you can add him to that team. Now we have a villain who is known for going up against the Green Arrow, and that is the Dark Archer, who is basically the evil version of Green Arrow. He's also known as Malcolm Merlin, but I like to call him the Dark Archer. Speaking of villains who are evil versions of heroes, next is Deathstorm, the evil version of Firestorm. He's a sick dude, man, and I mean that in the sense where, like, he's not well and he should seek help. He's awful. He's a terrible human being. But Deathstorm is going to be a villain you can play against, and you can also add him into the mix as part of the crime syndicate because he is one of their members. And Deathstorm will have translucent white effects around his head, because his head is made of, like, white-blue fire. Next is the hero Dreamer. I don't know too much about her either, but I had to include her because now she is making bigger and bigger waves in the DC universe, in Superman books and all over the place, and I think she's in a CW show. Uh, so I wanted to have Dreamer in here for the fans who are fans of these new characters. Now we have two classic villains who always work together as a pair, Dr. Psycho and Giganta. These are Wonder Woman villains, where Dr. Psycho is an evil little mad scientist and Giganta is a giant woman that he loves. And together, they make a formidable pair. I thought this would be a fun, oversized mini where she is holding him in her hand or something. I don't know, but I, I want to have some fun with this. We've already got two big minis in this stretch goal box. I love it. Keep it coming. Next is another mainstay hero everybody loves. It's Elongated Man. Everybody's favorite stretchy, springy dude. DC's answer to Reed Richards. He's got to be in here. He'll have a big, stretchy miniature too. So I'm sure... It'll be a lot of fun, and a lot of people are going to want to play as him. Something, something, rhyming man, says the demon Etrigan. He's our next hero. Etrigan is a, a man who can change into a demon, and it's uh, he's just a supernatural mainstay. He was on the Batman show. He was on the Justice League show. He's just a great-looking character, and I love the demon Etrigan. So I'm putting him in here. And it's a bit funny that we had Deathstorm when we didn't have the hero he was based off of. So you asked for him. Well, I asked for him, and I got him. It's Firestorm, one of the coolest and most unique DC heroes who has been missing from these three seasons. Another heavy hitter that I wanted to save for the big finale. Firestorm is so cool. There's two people inside him because he's so powerful and one of them is always locked inside mentally and he can turn any element into any other element. So like, damn, Firestorm is going to be OP, but it's worth it. And he'll have translucent fire effects on his head because I want to see that. And next is our first anti-hero of this stretch goal box, Flatline, who debuted, I believe, in 2021 in the Robin comic book. Another new character that I don't know too much about, but I wanted to have her in here. Next is the hero Gangbuster, another character who I was introduced to through the Reign of the Superman story. He's got such a unique costume. It's just like a motorcycle helmet uh, with this like no symbol on his chest and it's brown and yellow like classic Wolverine and he's got nunchucks. Like this guy is so cool. I want to see the chibi version of Gangbuster. Ooh, and now we've got a very scary villain. It's the Gentleman Ghost. A Batman villain with an excellent look. I love this guy. I want him in here. And of course, he will be able to be added to Arkham Asylum mode. And next we have an anti-hero who also belongs to the Batman universe. It's Ghostmaker. This is a new character as well. Apparently Batman trained him. So he is going to be able to be part of the Gotham Knights when he's doing good things. But he can also do some bad things and you can fight him. And he's really tough because he's very smart and Batman trained him. So I would be scared to fight anybody trained by Batman. Another big villain people have been waiting a long time to see is making his appearance at last. Gorilla Grodd, the smartest gorilla on the face of the earth. 
How can he not love this guy? And yes, he's a Flash villain, so you can add him to the interchangeable rogues mode. Now let's get another Wonder Woman villain in the mix. Why not? It's Grail, one of her newest villains. She has rock-like skin, and she is strong enough to go fist to fist with Wonder Woman that not many of her adversaries can boast that. You know, Cheetah can't do that, but Grail, Grail can go fist to fist with Wonder Woman. No problem. So that's going to be a tough fight. Another tough fight is going to be Grid, the villainous version of Cyborg from an alternate dimension. And of course, Grid is part of the crime syndicate. So you're going to get to add him to the interchangeable crime syndicate as well. Here's another hero from Reign of the Superman, or at least that's where I met him, the Guardian. And this guy works in a laboratory in Metropolis, and he's got a really sweet shield. What else do you have to know? Here's the villain I've been wanting to see for a while. Hath Set, the villain who has spent literal millennia torturing Hawkman and Hawkwoman. He is their primary nemesis, and he's an evil magician from way back in the ancient Egyptian days. I had to put Hath Set in here. Hippolyta is our next hero. She is the mother of Wonder Woman, making her the queen of Themyscira, queen of the Amazons. She's so powerful. She's so revered. She's so beloved. She's a great character. I wanted her in here. I also wanted the hero Our Man. And he's cool because he takes a vitamin that gives him superpowers, but it only lasts one hour. So I don't know if Big Pharma has been getting their noses into the DC world, but if they have, Our Man's the closest they've ever come. Next is another villain you can add to the Arkham Asylum mode, and that is Hush, one of Batman's creepiest villains from the past couple of decades. Thomas Elliot, the surgeon who became a serial killer. Hush is going to be a lot of fun, and I'm already picturing the way they would draw him as a chibi, and I'm already waiting in line at the board game store. Next is the hero, Impulse who is a young version of the Flash. All the Flash characters are coming out of the woodwork now because uh, he is a multiversal hero. So Impulse had to be here because he's part of the whole big Flash family. Next is Jade. Her father was Alan Scott, the original Green Lantern, and now Jade's trying to make a name for herself. Sometimes she gets cooped up in the mix of the other Green Lanterns, like Kyle Rayner, who I think had a thing with her once, but Jade is her own lady. She does her own thing, and she's really cool, so I wanted to have her here. Another cool person I wanted to add was Jonah Hex, who hails from the Old West, partner, and he's got a scarred face, and he fights evil cowboys and spooky things that happened back in the 1800s. Uh, I don't know too much about Jonah Hex outside of what I've seen on uh, television and such, but DC has a lot of stuff set in the Western era that they've really hung on to over the years, and he is their most popular name from there. So Megan Fox movie aside, Jonah Hex is cool, and he's got to be part of this game. Here's another Flash character. This one's an anti-hero. It's Killer Frost, and she's all icy and cool. And in the Flash show, she was really awesome, and I may or may not have had a crush on her in that show. And she's also going to be able to be added to the rogues mode. And let's stay on board that anti-hero train, because now we have King Shark, an Aquaman villain who's just a big shark, right? He's huge. He's hilarious. But he's also been known to be a Flash villain, so we're going to go ahead and say he can be added to the rogues as well. And when you play as him as a hero, he can be part of the Suicide Squad team. I mentioned Kyle Rayner, the Green Lantern, earlier, and now is as good a time as any to finally get the vanilla version of him. Last time, we had the White Lantern version of him, but that was like the Super Saiyan version of Kyle. We want regular Kyle, because everybody likes regular Kyle, and he's finally here. It only took us three seasons. Lady Shiva is next. Another Batman villain who has tangled with him before, and uh, she's, she's nothing to sneeze at. She was one of the few villains from Batman Arkham Origins who made it out to fight another day. But since she's a Batman villain, why not? Let's have fun with it. Let's let her be part of Arkham Asylum mode, too. Next is the hero, Lightning. Lightning is the daughter of Black Lightning, so she has the same powers as him, which means, yes, she is going to have translucent yellow effects on her mini. Next is the villain Maxwell Lord, a big-time Wonder Woman villain who's been missing from our roster. He's not missing anymore. Pedro Pascal did a good job with him in the movie. I don't care what anybody says. Um, this guy has done a lot of damage in the DC Universe, and it was satisfying to see Wonder Woman kill him in the comics, even though she probably shouldn't have killed him because she's a hero. But regardless, now you can kill Maxwell Lord on your tabletop, consequence-free. Metamorpho is the next hero we're unlocking, and everybody loves Metamorpho, and we're going to get him in the upcoming DC Universe by James Gunn, so that's exciting. But come on, this guy's incredible. He has to be in the game, and he's going to have translucent white effects on his mini because he's always morphing, right? Hence the name. 
Next is a terrifying villain, Monarch, who has been threatening the multiverse for many, many moons. This guy has uh, come close to taking over the world a few times as well, if I remember right. He's almost like the DC version of King the Conqueror. Like, he's that kind of guy. So, I want Monarch in here. Mon L, who is, if my lore knowledge is correct, he is a Daxamite, even though he has a Kryptonian name. He's from Daxum, which is the neighboring planet of Krypton. I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't care. But he was on the Supergirl show and he was in a bunch of comics. He's gone by a few different names, but I like mon -El as his superhero name the best. So he's going to be a really powerful character that we can play as. Yet another newer hero who I'm not familiar with, but I want to throw some love to is Monkey Prince. Look at this guy. This is so much fun. I want Monkey Prince in the game. And speaking of fun characters, a villain that I have wanted since the dawn of time in a board game. Please welcome Mr. Mixius Pitlick. And yeah, that's apparently how you say it. Mr. Mixius Pitlick is a Superman villain who has this unique ability here where uh, he comes from another dimension. So he fits the multiverse theme. And the only way to defeat him, you can't just punch him in the face. He, he's too powerful. He's basically got godlike powers. The only way to defeat him is to trick him into saying or spelling his name backwards, which is Cult of Zixim. I thought it would be cool if he was one of those villains like Dormammu, where you can't actually attack him physically, but somehow in the game you have to do stuff to trick him into saying his name backwards. Maybe he comes with tokens with letters in his name and you have to collect the tokens in the right order to spell out Cult of Zixim or something. Kanji Studios or Meepo Monkey or somebody, make this happen. Let's let's make a Mr. Mixie's Pitlick homebrew and see what we can do with it. How about another Flash villain? Okay, if you insist, it's Multiplex, who can separate himself, kind of like Multiple Man. He's a bad dude. He's also a member of the Rogues, so he can be added to the Rogues. Obsidian, who is the brother of Jade. That's our next hero. And he's got a very unique look, this dark looking costume with the big cape. Very action figure-y. I love this guy. And you can pair him up with Jade and they can make a good team together. Kind of like North Star and Aurora. Next villain is Ocean Master, the brother and primary antagonist of Aquaman. I've been saving him for season three because he's really cool. He's a big deal. He's going to come with translucent blue effects on his miniature and he's going to have that big trident that he has in the movie. Come on, this guy's great. Look at him. Next is the hero Pandora, who wears a very cool deep red cloak and a hood. And uh, she's part of the supernatural world. So you'll be able to add her to the Justice League Dark team deck. And after that is the villain Perdegaton, who's another time traveling villain and a longtime enemy of the Justice Society. So you can get your Justice Society characters together and go punch them in the face. Speaking of people who are really good at punching in the face and who are part of the Justice Society, say hello to Power Girl, another big DC character that I've been wanting to save so that season three still has a lot of good stuff in it. Power Girl's awesome. Everybody knows her. Everybody loves her. How about another Batman villain? Or how about another three Batman villains in a row? Here we go. Prometheus, an evil knight who is very similar to Batman. He is also hyper intelligent and hyper strong. He's basically a peak human being just like Bruce Wayne, but he's evil. He can be added to Arkham Asylum mode, as can the next Batman villain, Punchline, who is the daughter of Joker, maybe? At least the replacement for Harley Quinn, Joker's new sidekick, Punchline, who is crazier than Harley, almost as crazy as Daddy himself, another Arkham Asylum mode candidate. And last but not least, Raish Al Ghul, Batman villain we have been wanting to see for a while. Of course, his threat cards, some of them at least, have to be Lazarus Pits. And if you punch him and take away all of his health, he comes back out of one of those Lazarus Pits because that's how Rachel Ghoul rolls. And yes, we'll also add him to Arkham Asylum mode because that's just too much fun to not do. And coming up next is the hero Ravager. Ravager is the daughter of Deathstroke, the Terminator. I like her long white hair and her mask. Just the look of Deathstroke is great, and I love how she took that and adapted it and made it her own. So yeah, I want Ravager in here. I also want Red Canary, who is a newer character who took on the mantle of Red Canary after Black Canary supposedly got killed. So now we have Black Canary, White Canary, and Red Canary. Together they are three totally different colored canaries. Just Make them fight Catwoman. There you go. That sounds like a fight. Our next hero is not super powered, but in my books, she's still a superhero. And that's Renee Montoya. 
Gotham's most honest, hardworking cop next to Jim Gordon. This lady's awesome. She's been a mainstay in the Batman universe for a long time. We're going to add her to Gotham Knights team because we can. We're also going to do the same thing to the next hero, Robin, the alternate Robin, Carrie Kelly, who is from the Dark Knight Returns parallel future. Ooh. Uh, but you can team her up with all the other Robins. Just like the next hero, Robin, the Damian Wayne version. He is the current Robin, if I'm not mistaken, and also the legitimate Mori Povich confirmed son of Batman. And he's a Gotham Knight as well. He's also got a katana, if I remember right, which is really cool. And sure, let's have another Flash villain. It's Savitar, the god of speed, who is ultra powerful. And we'll also make him a member of the rogues, because we can. And he's going to be really fast, and he will also have translucent yellow effects on his mini. And next is the hero, Signal, who debuted in 2013. And he's a supporting Batman character, so we're going to make him part of the Gotham Knights. But Look how cool this guy's outfit is. He's like a mini Batman with yellow and black. This is a really great look. I almost put Signal in the Batman box, but that box was getting overstuffed. So we're going to throw him in here. He's a perfect bonus character. Our next hero is Simon Baz, another of Earth's Green Lanterns. So he's going to have translucent green effects, and he's also going to be able to be part of the Green Lantern core team, as is Sojourner Mullane. I don't even know if I'm saying her name right. This is exactly the same thing here. She is another human who is a character who's on the newer side, who is also part of the Green Lantern Corps, right? For the longest time, you only had Hal Jordan, Kyle Rayner, John Stewart, and Guy Gardner. But lately, you've gotten Jessica Cruz, Sojourner Mullane, and Simon Baz. So you have this new team to work with. Uh, I've read of, uh, a handful of Simon Baz things, and he's really cool. I've read one Jessica Cruz story, and she's awesome. I haven't read anything about Sojourner, but she seems nice too. They're all going to be translucent green with stuff shooting out of their rings. This is exciting for me, a guy who, you guessed it, is way too big of a fan of Green Lantern. Next is Speedy, the hero who serves as the sidekick to Green Arrow. And his old school costume kind of looks like Robin Hood, but essentially he's just like Green Arrow, but red. So that's cool. Our next hero is Stargirl, who has a great classic DC costume, a very Captain America-ish looking costume too, and she is a member of the Justice Society. Uh, and now another heavy hitter hero that a lot of people have wanted, Static, right? This guy got his own cartoon in the DC universe. Like, that's how big a deal he is. We're going to give him translucent blue effects on his mini because blue lightning is always shooting out of him. And we'll make him look different from the Flash characters. What an awesome dude. He's part of this now. Ooh, here's a multiversal hero for you. Superwoman from another world where Lucy Lane became the Superwoman. Is she going to be a little bit overpowered? Maybe, but we've got Kryptonians already. We know what to do with them. Somebody will figure out how to make them work in this game. So I'm throwing her in here. Our last anti-hero of the stretch goal box is going to be Talia al Ghul, the daughter of Ra's al Ghul. She can be added to Gotham Knights because sometimes she's Batman's friend and sometimes friend with benefits, but other times she's not so nice. So we're going to make her a villain and make her be able to be added to Arkham Asylum mode. The hero Thunder is next, and she is the second daughter of Black Lightning who gained electric powers. So of course we're going to have her on board. You can put Black Lightning, Thunder, and Lightning together and have the trio, the family members, go up against the villain. That's going to be so much fun. She'll have translucent yellow effects on her mini. Following up Thunder is our last villain of the Stretch Gold Box and our last Batman villain of the Stretch Gold Box. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Two-Face. Aha! Did you even remember this guy hasn't been put out yet? We haven't put him out yet. We haven't had Two-Face. I've been saving him for the very, very end. What a great character. He's in here. Of course he's in here. And of course he's going to be playable in Arkham Asylum mode. I wonder if there's a way that uh, we can integrate his coin flipping into things. Like maybe when he bams, uh, maybe the, the game actually comes with a little coin that you flip when you play as him. And depending on what side it lands on, his bam does two different things. Oh man, <laughs> is this game real yet? Now let's give it up for the hero Wave Rider. This is a really cool cosmic looking dude. He's kind of a silver surfer kind of guy. Uh, he rides on this big rainbow looking wave. So maybe that rainbow wave will have a translucent effect to it. Possibly. That might be tricky to do, but I can see Simon pulling it off. Next is the hero Wildcat, but the Yolanda Montez version of Wildcat. She's much younger than the Justice Society Wildcat, and she's much cooler. And she works out at this gym, and she's good at boxing, and she fights people, and the trading card of her is awesome, so I want her in here. 
I also want Wonder Girl, who is part of Wonder Woman's entourage. She's a hero who played a big part in, I believe it was Infinite Crisis. So of course I want to see Wonder Girl play a part in the game. And why stop there? Our final hero of the stretch goal box is Wonder Woman, the Yara Floor version. And that completes the stretch goal box. And if I've done my calculations correctly, the new hero team decks we are getting in this third and final season are the Justice Society, the Legends of Tomorrow, the Outsiders, Supermen, and Watchmen. The Supermen are obviously all the versions of Superman that came about in the reign of the Superman story, and then all the other ones speak for themselves, but this all makes sense to me. Nowhere near as many teams as we had last time, but hey, that's just because we got all the good ones out of the way already. But now it's time to talk about one last thing a lot of people's favorite thing, because it's always something great, the all-in bonus. If you're wild enough and crazy enough to go all-in on DC United Multiverse, what are you getting? How are they making it worth your while? Well, in season one, it was with a hero. It was with an oversized hero, Adam Smasher, right? In the second season, it was with an oversized villain, Starro. This time, even though it would have been cool to have another oversized character, we're not going that route, because this doesn't need to go there. This time you're getting an anti-hero who is just as tall as all the other minis, but this is a big deal, especially if you're a DC fan from the 90s like myself, because the all-in bonus for DC United Multiverse is the Phantasm. The primary antagonist, sort of, from Batman Mask of the Phantasm, one of the coolest things the DC animated universe has ever done. Uh, what I'm about to say is spoilers for that movie. If you haven't seen it, I really don't want to spoil it for you, but here we go. We are going to make her an anti-hero because yes, she was a scary villain that you could face off against, but she also was a nice person at the end of the day. Uh, so I want people to be able to play as the Phantasm and live out some 90s dreams because that's what this is all about. But there's one more gameplay feature that we're going to add to this game. And I should have added it last time because it's much more thematic for the Genesis uh, series. But you know what? We're throwing it in here because I was dumb, but I want this to be in it. And that is Parallax Challenge Mode. I did the same thing in my Marvel United Hypothetical Season 4. I did it with the Spirit of Vengeance. But Parallax Challenge Mode works like this. Parallax has infected a superhero and turn them into a villain. We saw this happen with Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern in the comics. So this essentially lets you take any hero across DC United and let you play against them as a villain possessed by Parallax. It's just a simple set of cards and a villain dashboard. And there'll also be a translucent yellow ring that fits around the base of a miniature. And you just snap the miniature into this ring and the ring makes it look like the character has all this yellow swirly stuff swirling around them because that's how parallax rolls and there you have it parallax challenge mode any hero can be played against as a villain i mean talk about a mode that adds infinite more replayability to an already infinitely replayable game this folks is the last bit to add to dc united and i think it's a pretty nifty one so there you have it our final dc united character and now at last, we can bid this whole thing adieu. And thus we come to the end of DC United Multiverse. And man, it's been a ride. This has been a really fun project. Uh, when I first started making my Season 4 Marvel uh, wish list, it just got all the gears turning and I was like, well, okay, let's see what we can do with these. And before I knew it, I jumped down a rabbit hole and my friends were calling and saying, where are you? Who are you? Why are you just sitting in a corner writing the names of DC villains in red ink? And I'm like, leave me alone. It's a process. But we finally got near <laughs> to the end of the hypothetical road. Will these games ever exist? We can only dream. I mean, it would be difficult to find the money and the space for it, but I know I would be hard pressed to say no to campaigns like these, especially if they aim for my heart, like these three hypothetical ones have. But anyway, I'm doing this to share with all of you. Maybe you hate this. Maybe you love it. Maybe you think I'm crazy. Maybe you think I'm the sanest person you've ever met. Whatever it is, chime in in the comments. Let me know. What does your hypothetical DC United look like? What does your hypothetical anything United look like? I want to hear about it because that's the kind of fun game this is, and that's the kind of nerd I am. So I'll see you all here next time 
on Digital Charcuterie as we continue to make the wait for Marvel United Multiverse a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. Until next time, may you be the masters of your own universe.